your brother Hello. Larry Adenekon. Welcome to you to the Really Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God. It's all powered by the Pastor Larry Adenekon Center for Edge Inspiration, the PLACA. This is the Daily Gem Devotional, making you a gem to a generation, gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. I shall in truth today on the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of heaven. Coming from Matthew 19, 23 to the end of that chapter. We're praying together right now and then right after we are into it. Father, we bless your name, oh God. Thank you, thank you, thank you for a fresh month, for a fresh uh, half of the year. Oh God, fresh quarter and everything. We just give you all praise, all glory in the name of Jesus Christ. As you go on into sharing together this morning with your people, we ask again for your help at it in the name of Jesus Christ. And we ask, oh God, that you cause that to be both utterance and, and hearing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God, in Jesus name we pray Amen. hallelujah okay then um, Matthew 19 23 then Jesus said to his disciples assuredly or verily I say unto you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven and again I say unto you it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God uh, when his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then Peter answered and said to him, See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? So Jesus said to them, I surely I say to you, in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father, mother, or wife, children, lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and the last first. Okay, then. So, yeah, um, this is um, uh, one passage that really uh, backs my, my position on the enter, the, the meaning of enter the kingdom. You know, um, we often just look at it as if we um, access, we have access into uh, like into a room or to the kingdom of God, and that's correct. But that's not all there is to it. I've said that many times here, yeah? that at enter means run, means operate, just as much as the enter key of, of the computer. I've said that, you know, a number of times. And this is one of those passages that back my point. Let us look at some of the things here. It says, uh, uh, it is uh, hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Let us look at that story. It's talk they're talking about a certain rich man who um, um, came to ask Jesus a question. We have seen that in the last time we came around here, uh, probably that'd be last Friday or so. Okay, and then, so the story now continues with the still, some statements from the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, ah, it is so hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Look at that, the story of that man. That man was not a bad man. He was a good man he, and he really wanted he, okay i have acquired money i've acquired everything what remains is, is the spiritual aspect of my life i want to sort that one out too and make sure that i have you know everything all sorted out all com you know complete and you know so he wasn't a bad man in actual fact if you read the account in mark chapter 10 um i don't have enough time today to look okay maybe we'll see <laughs> um mark chapter 10 and as he was going out of the road one came running and knelt down before him, good teacher, what shall I do that my inherit a hand alive? Why do you call me good? Say, no one is good but one, that is God. Now you know the commandments, you know, go and do them. He answered, teacher, I've kept all these things from my youth. Then Jesus looked at him, loved him, said to him, one thing you lack, go your way, sell all that you have, give to the poor. So the man was not a bad man. Jesus looked at him. Jesus loved him. Yeah. So he wasn't a bad man, okay? But the problem was his focus, his strength, as far as it's concerned, his strength of, uh, sorry, his source of strength, source of power, source of ability, okay, and all those things. That was, that was the problem. He was not a bad person. It was just that where he derived, um, yeah, what was his source is not, was not really God, as far as he was concerned. <laughs> Praise God. So that, that was the thing. Now, when Jesus said it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven, what he's saying is this, that once somebody... Um, sees his money, his possessions, and all those things as his source. Once um, they think that they don't need to pray, or they don't need to depend upon God, or to exercise their faith for all these things, when things are like that with such a person, 
He doesn't see the need to operate the kingdom of God. He doesn't see the reason why he should bother himself to learning how to operate the kingdom of God. That's it. That's why I says it is hard for, if you look at the account in Mark that we just read, Jesus made it, he said, it is hard for those that trust in riches. So, we want to um, make something clear. It's not just the riches. It's the confidence that we have in them, or people have in them. It's the trust that people repose in them. That is the problem. Because that is where they consider to be their source. Because they have money, they say to them, it answers all things, you know. And, all, and for those reasons, they are not bothered. They, they are not interested. Once they are focused in, in that direction, what's the point about operating the kingdom? They don't. They don't, they don't look at it that way, you know. And that's why Jesus said it is so difficult for them to do. He was also using one of their adages back then. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle <laughs> than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to beg a pardon. You know, for a camel is such a huge you know, animal passing through the, that little hole at the bottom of your needle. <laughs> it is easier for a camel to pass through that thing that because they are not just going to, you know, they don't, they don't see any need for it. Because they, they think everything is sorted. I have, him, I have means to get it, things done. So you see, but for the ones who do not have such means, yes, they will operate the kingdom of God. And by the power of the kingdom of God, they will have the same things. That these people want to, you know, will um, access through money. You can actually access it as you learn to operate the kingdom of God. To run, to, you know, to press the enter key and get it working for you. Praise God. Amen. So that's it. Now, this, the, the next thing I see from this, the first few verses, is this. Now, Jesus began in 23, hand for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. In 24, easier for a coming to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Now, that was Jesus using the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. In two um, sentences that followed one another, Jesus seemed to have used them interchangeably. That's what he has done. Kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. And that's what I'm, you know, using this morning to just, you know, to, uh, uh, because any, a lot of people try to see what's the difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Jesus used them interchangeably. In other words, they are one and the same. Is that system by which God gets things to run? Praise God. That's the kingdom of heaven. That's the kingdom of God. It's not necessarily that place you are going to enter into eventually when we leave this earth. That is true. But you see, it's a complete system, you know, that runs right now. It's not something that's going to run in the future. And Jesus used them interchangeably, meaning that they are one and the same thing. Praise the Lord. So it says, when the disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished. And then it says, ah, so who them can be saved? You know, that was, they felt or they thought that the rich person has an advantage in getting salvation. But that's not the case from what you have seen. So they said, ah. Really? So who then can be saved if the rich people cannot be saved? <laughs> so Jesus just looked at them and said to them, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. There are two things I'm going to share from here. Number one, how that nothing is impossible unto our God. And a lot of people say that. It's not um, um, a new thing. A lot of people say that nothing is impossible to God. God has all power. He can do all things. A lot, a lot of us believe that and I, understand, and I agree with that. But the second thing that I want us to learn from this is this. That um, with men, it is impossible. Um, ah, I'm looking for the right way to, to explain this one now. Okay? All right. Let's put it this way. Once you don't have that um, belief and faith in the kingdom of God, or rather, when you have that faith in riches and money and all that, your thinking will be, with money, all things are possible. That's it. That's the way you're going to, with money, all things are possible. And a lot of people think so. Okay? But for us, our thinking should be with God, all things are possible. Not with money, all things are possible. Because you and I know there are certain things that money cannot do. That it cannot do. Many, many people, it hasn't, it hasn't bought happiness for them. That's why some, some really, really rich people commit suicide. And that's why they have seven marriages. Because they couldn't really find happiness in spite of all the money. I mean, they married after one another. You know, seven marriages, you know, and things like that. So, once, you know, for men, for these people who believe in riches, with, with money, all things are possible. In, in our own case, with God. All things are possible. That's the case. That's that's the, uh, what I want us to learn from there. So Peter now said unto him, "We have left everything and followed you. What shall we have therefore?" Did you know that many of us are in today in this kind of situation that Peter was? That from time to time we also say, ah, I've, "I've left everything to follow the Lord Jesus Christ." You know, I'm just hoping I'm going to get. <laughs> so Peter was saying, "We have left everything and we have followed." So what are we going to get? 
And Jesus went on to assure or reassure them, as the case may be, number one, you are going to get good, good positions with him, you know, in, in his kingdom. Amen. Number two, there's going to be compensation here. Amen. There's going to be compensation for all the things that you sacrifice. There's going to be compensation. You're going to be well compensated. That's what he's telling us. As well as position you're going to get with him or status in the kingdom. You're going to get with him profile. You're going to get along with the Lord Jesus Christ. And number two, you're going to be compensated for everything that you have sacrificed for him. You get a hundredfold. That's what he says. Praise the Lord. He now ends it with bots. That but is where we're going to start the next chapter when we come around to chapter 20. It says, but many who, who are first will be last and the last first. That was the way he ended uh, that particular uh, chapter. But we won't talk much about it now until we come around again. When we go to the next chapter, we'll address this one in particular. Praise the Lord. God help us all in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to remind you that today is the first Monday you know, of July and therefore at noon we're going to be sharing a whole sermon, a 30 minute sermon uh, by the grace of God as we do every month. So you are welcome. We'll see you at 12 o'clock. God bless you. Thank you very much.